Hello, everybody. Welcome to Uncovered from the Vault of the Virginia Folklife Program. I'm the interim director of the Folklife Program. My name is Pat Jarrett, and um, I'm happy you're joining us today. Um, for those of you starting who just showed up here, this is our monthly uh, live streaming series where we are sharing some recordings that we have uh, freshly digitized from our tape archive and other things that we've recorded that we want to share with you. Um, before I go further, I'd like to acknowledge that Virginia Humanities uh, acknowledges the Monacan Nation, the original people of the land and waters of our home in Charlottesville, Virginia. And we invite you to learn more about the indigenous Virginians on our Encyclopedia Virginia page. Um, so that's, uh, we, we'd like for you to check that out. Um, well, uh, today will be a little bit different from our normal formats. Today we have Martha and Emily Spencer of the White Top Mountain Band. Um, people that have, this is a group of uh, friends that we've been working with for many, many, many years. And we're so happy that they're here. Um, but we, we've got so many good clips. We've got so many good recordings of the White Top Mountain Band that today we're just going to show kind of a, a collection. We've got a, a number of good videos that uh, that really show uh, this group and, and really uh, spans uh, the time of our relationship. Um, and and I'm, I'm excited. I, I, I can't wait to uh, get into some of this stuff and to talk with Martha and Emily about this. So um, Leave your comments in the chat. Um, we've got a chat on the Zoom if you registered here. Um, if you have questions, um, use the Q&A tool. And, um, and yeah, without further ado, let me share this first clip. Um, let me see here. We are going to be playing first a, uh, a video that is from around the mid 90s recorded by Gary Barrow. And uh, it's of uh, Martha, or I'm sorry, it's for Emily and Thornton Spencer. Um, and here we go. So hold tight and we'll get it up here. Thank you. 
All right. Uh, well, and I'd like to bring on uh, Emily and Martha Spencer now to talk about what we just saw, and we'll be bringing some stuff up. Hey, ladies, how are you? Oh, hello. Good. How are you? Hey. <laughs> 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 everybody's here today <laughs> this is a, you know i noticed in the background of that shot there was a dog i just this is the first time i saw there's a dog tail running around back there so, uh emily, do you remember when that was recorded was that 95 96 i know it was it was in the 90s sometime but i don't remember the exact year i know um it was probably around the time, judging from the looks of us, that we did a recording with Tom and Becky Barr and Fred Taylor. So somewhere in the 90s. Right on. Yep. And and Emily, I actually don't know how you started playing music with, with Thornton or the band. What, what, can you tell us, can you take us back to the beginning? Okay, back to the beginning would go back all the way into 1975. Of course, I'd been playing music you know, pretty much my whole life in some way, shape, or form, but I moved down here to southwestern Virginia. I was a student at Clinch Valley College, and um, I came to this area because of the music. That's why I moved here, and I met Thornton in the summer of 1975 when actually a mutual high school friend <laughs> named Susan Cahill, we, we all went together to this old time banjo player's house named Stuart Carico. And I think that actually the first time Thornton and I ever played together was recorded on his porch. It's somewhere on a, on a cassette tape live, but that's how we met. And that was probably July 75. By August 75, Thornton and Flurry Dow who played banjo and Kenneth Blevins from um, Connor Rock up here in the White Top area, myself kind of started the White Top Mountain Band. Mm -hmm. So we started playing then in that August of 75. Oh, wow. So that's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and then, uh, so the, the lineup has changed a number of times, I think, right? Or is just, you know, because people, you know, new members came in, old members went, came out. And some people passed away, of course. By the next summer, I know, of course, Albert was playing with us, Albert Hash. He was our brother-in-law. And Tom and Becky Barr, Barr's Fiddle Shop and so on. We played together for a really long time. Wow, that's And cool. I was playing guitar then, and Flurry moved away, and I went on to the banjo. And Fred Taylor played guitar with us a long time till he passed away. And Johnny and Nancy Gentry, where we, we really played a lot together. I mean, we played lots of gigs. And then it's kind of evolved into what it is now. Yeah. Spencer Eventually. Pennington. Spencer Pennington. Huh? Yes, Spencer, Spencer Pennington. Pennington. Yes. He was, a, he was a cousin to Fred Taylor. He passed away as well. Uh, he played with mom and dad. And then, yeah. And now we've got, uh, yeah, mom and Kilby, uh, my brother, and uh, also... Ursula and Debbie. So. Ursula Fletcher and Debbie Bramer. Yeah. And we've been together a good while. Yeah. Um, and, and after Thornton passed away, then Martha and Kilby have both fiddled, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I was, Thornton is, is was a, such a force, you know, he was, he didn't say a lot, but when, when he, when he talked, it, you listened and, and yeah. he, I, I really, um, I miss him. Um, yes. And, yeah. I was glad he was he, tell me he was a legend and a great source of knowledge about music uh, I mean I really learned a lot about music from him that when I realized you know when I came into it I didn't know what key stuff was playing I mean when you start thinking about all the things you learned over the years you know he was just a great wealth of knowledge certainly and and Martha you were actually you apprenticed under uh, Thornton yeah. early on, I think, in the Virginia Folk Life Apprenticeship Program. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what Emory and Henry, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was, uh, yeah, I was um, apprenticed with Daddy and uh, and on fiddle, and the Mama also apprenticed with uh, with uh, with Kilby and Amanda. Well, on the banjo, and now she, I think you did a second one with uh, Lisa. Yeah, yeah, Lisa Ring. Yeah. It's 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 all you guys. You know, when when I was talking with uh, John Loman, one one sentence he said was, "You know, White Top Mountain Band is on the Mount Rushmore of Virginia folk life." <laughs> and, oh, and I, I couldn't agree more. I Aww. mean, 
it's such a, a, a musical group, musical family, and it, it, it runs so deep. Um, also in that program, we, um, in early on, we had Audrey Hash Ham, uh, yep. who was, uh, of course, Albert's daughter. And um, she, she, the Hashes have really influenced that region um, yep. in instrument building as well as playing music. Could yes. you could you guys talk about that a little bit? Oh goodness! About the influence of Albert Hash and on, on in that region. I would almost think nearly any instrument maker in this region, probably making instruments today, could probably trace those roots back to Albert. I really think that, and it was just like open house at his house when he was living. There were people there all the time. He helped everybody. And Audrey was the same way. I mean, they were both so generous. Anything they knew, anything they could help with, they helped people build instruments and work on instruments. And I mean, I can't even, I can't overestimate how much, you know, how giving they were. That's so beautiful. <laughs> That's, I mean, the, the free flow of, of knowledge and to, and to instruct like that. I, every it seems like every instrument you're right every instrument maker i talk to you can kind of trace back to albert hash um i know the the, the style of instrument you know I, I'm, we're talking with chris testerman he is uh I, he's going to be a returning master in our virginia folk life apprenticeship program this year and he he traces it back to albert and audrey um, yep. and how every instrument is its own unique uh work of art you know it's it's not standardized you've got to you know feel it you express your emotions into that and, and and you can really see it in in albert's work uh it's it's very unique and 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 what about 2008 i think around then um we helped to get the uh, the virginia folk life program uh helped uh do the first albert hash festival is that right yes yep Martha? i know we what was, that, what were those early days like of that festival? It, well, it, I, and it might have it might have been the second year because y'all did it the year before, right? But I think two in two thousand eight or two thousand nine, yeah. And uh, I know, um, yeah, it was at Mount Rogers School, uh, which is a little, um, was was at the time the community school, which is now um, was consolidated into Grayson Highlands. And and there was a mom and well Albert and uh, Daddy and and mom. Audrey. Um, and Audrey, of course. Audrey, for many years, um, helped uh, run, sorry, <laughs> run, run the, uh, run the, like the string band program where the kids, you know, I, I was I was in it and you know, a lot of people were in it, but it was that, uh, so, you know, where you learn fiddle, banjo, guitar, because there was no marching band because the school was so small. And so, so we had string band. And uh, so that's where, you know, so anyway, um, so that was a big part of the school, but then um, even after the school closed, it, um, there's now still a program at Grayson Highlands, and then Eddie Mon works with string band and, and independent since mm -hmm. mom retired, but mom did it for many years down there too. So, um, but anyway, so yeah, we started the festival at Mount Rogers, and then um, after because of issues with the school closing, we ended up going to Grayson Highlands State Park. Um, but it was a, a both locations are beautiful places to have it and it was like a real it's real sweet there I think those you know because all the dancers would come out and you know had a you know kind of a small stage and uh uh yeah we had some some great I think some really good times there and it was just like a real good feel and crafts people and luthiers and like I said Audrey was there and a lot of folks and now it's it's at Grayson Highlands which also has a wonderful it's a beautiful location and we get to do it at the Henderson stage because obviously kind of mentioned in Luthiers like Albert definitely um I think Wayne and him had quite a connection with instrument building as well as performing together. Now question Martha when you were in school did you attend the combined school there? Mm, yes yeah and it, it was K through 12 and uh uh, so yeah, there was a, it was a real small school. There's about a hundred. Um, so yeah, it was a yeah neat experience, and I think it was a special place to have the festival to start with. It, before you know they'd had it, um, I guess a long time ago they'd had it. I guess it, uh, in Ash County because Albert had a lot of connections in there as well as in Grayson. But um, yeah, 
Now, did you play, and I know that Emily, you taught that, you, you ran the music program there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Martha, did you play music in, in that string band when you attended the school? Yeah, yeah, I think me and Kilby did. And uh, Chris Estrin was in there, yes. like, like a lot of people were in that <laughs> program, so. And uh, yeah, so there's a lot of, uh, which I mean, we were playing when we were kids, but you know, it was obviously great to play with your friends. And there was a lot of people, I think in the, um, uh, in the community that had Ken folks like Blake Rash, who, you know, his, his, he may be in some of these clips later, but his, his grandpa or great grandpa, uh, Corbett Stamper helped influence Albert. And so, mm -hmm. so there's definitely a lot of connection there but yeah so I think it, the Albert Hatch Festival has been a more, real wonderful way to honor Albert and then after Audrey passed um you know we kind of tried to honor her with it as well because she was a big part of you know helping get it, that started when obviously just you know the family and then uh since and then since dad's passed too you know it's been kind of good to just kind of keep keep their uh traditions going so and I'd love to see a class photo like of, of of that music class because I'm sure now <laughs> you can just pick out like oh yeah these you know I, I mean what what a great group of musicians don't be playing music together as kids that's that's fantastic yeah, yeah. so well I'll, I, it's uh, if you don't mind I'm gonna uh, lead into we've got a clip from the Albert Hash Festival of you guys playing and it really does show all the dancing I love it um, <laughs> and if you look close uh, there it, you, Audrey is in the audience which uh, I know you guys mentioned it. it tickled it tickled me too to see it. It's like, oh hey, seeing people in the audience. So we're gonna move over to that clip now. So if you guys want to turn off your video, I'll share this. All right. All right. Okay. Hey, girls, so feel welcome over here. They are the White Top Mountain. Hey, John, I hope we can live up to that universal feeling there. <laughs> you, know, you know, Daddy's bass used to be the same size as this fiddle. You know what happened to it? A rattlesnake bit it. It swelled up and never has one down yet. Well, right. And that's an Albert Hash joke right there. <laughs> yeah, that's Albert right. used to tell that. And Thornton's got Albert's hat on, so he's ready to drag that bow today. Y'all get out there and dance, everybody. We have requests for chicken sounds, Thornton. Oh,
45 late. They want a fast one. Do train 45. That Jackson sang it. Let's get on board. Gonna rouse that butt up. I don't know what he's a do. He needs a bow, he says. Pardon us just a moment. But it's very good to see everybody out today, and we really appreciate everybody coming out and supporting the festival and making. We really are glad to see each year. It seems like it's growing, and we're, we appreciate all of our luthiers and all of our craft people. And we've had a lot of volunteers and hard work, and we appreciate. All y'all that's helped, I know Scott McCann and Jackson, Hale Baldwin, and just more people than we can name, and we appreciate y'all. Chris is not there. And yes, Chris Testament did this beautiful banner using a Sharpie and dry erase markers back in my room. <laughs> it's like a masterpiece. He can do miracles. <laughs> All right, I believe the maestro is ready to play. <laughs> That's a natural stopping point for that one, but I love seeing all the. <laughs> Wasn't that great? Yeah, yeah, it's always nice. But I think uh, to see all the dancers and uh, yeah, and just uh, I think it's a big part of um, I think of the uh, goes hand in hand with the music in our areas, the dancing. I think um, big part of the the um, the crowds. I think our our stop that. Our dancers and uh, and also. Um, yeah, like I just think it's such a big part of the tradition that goes hand in hand with the music. 
Yeah, and and Martha, you're an accomplished dancer yourself. I've been seeing, I've seen you on stage a number of times, where you just knock them dead with your flat footing. I think it's flat footing, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I call it flat footing. Sorry, my dog keeps pushing that. Um, oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I call it flat footing. Um, you know, in our area, I think there's kind of you know in Appalachian dance styles, you know, generally people kind of say flat footing, clogging, buck buck dancing. Um, and I generally, have, you know, I always kind of grew up calling it flat footing because, you know, we go around mom and dad play, you know, lots of dances and festivals. And so I just grew up like learning it from people that were around, you know, and so um, I never took lessons or anything. So, but generally like an, imp, you know, kind of it's a little, I guess, older style than clogging in some ways in the way you're not kind of routine, you don't always have taps and uh, kind of, it's a lot of improvising and freestyle. You know, I think in certain contests, people might say, well, you know, like, if you raise your feet, you know, above your knee, which I do sometimes. Some people would say, well, that's not like most clogging. It's, and I probably do some clogging steps or buck steps. Um, uh, but also, I would generally call the overall stuff, um, I would call it flat fitting. Um, even though, like you said, people kind of vary on their, you know, opinions on that sort of thing. But um, yeah, and but that's what, uh, and I've always, uh, like I said, enjoy it. I think it's just a big part of life with the dance music. Definitely. And, and I think, um, what is the singing feet? Uh, it was the or talking feet. Talking feet. Yeah, that's awesome. It, and it, I, go ahead. I could mention too, uh, uh, before the pandemic started, um, I started, um, um, oh, and by the way, it was cool to see John on there. So hi, John, if you're out. Listening. Yes. Hey, John. <laughs> we love you. We, uh, we love you and miss you. So if you're doing good. And, um, uh, but, uh, on the, yeah, so in 2019, um, along with, uh, I don't know if he's watching or not too, but hi, Jeremy. Uh, uh, Jeremy Drummond, um, I met them, um, we've all met them through uh, him and Dave Drummond. I mean, Dave, Pool, <laughs> Dave Pullman, sorry, Dave. Dave Pullman and Jeremy Drummond, like through Never Met a Stranger, where they were kind of doing some documentary stuff. And uh, anyway, so, and then uh, Jeremy and me kind of, uh, Work together on the Appalachian Dance World, where we kind of done some interviews with dancers, like some I grew up seeing, or some people who had come to our shows that were some maybe some folks in that, just interviewing them kind of about how they got into dancing and uh, just kind of uh, documenting their dancing. Because I did one of them was in the video. I noticed. Yeah, yeah. Don Hess. <laughs> yeah, Don Hess was in there, and uh, and I knew a lot uh, of those folks. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, it's kind of an important thing too, because you know sometimes I feel like. Uh, you grew up like I grew up seeing so many dancers or you just like when you're playing now like there's so many dancers that are so wonderful um and you don't always get their story as much as you do with musicians you know and I thought you know it'd be a really great thing to kind of capture now but it you know it, it's times change you know with with different things you know with dance traditions and things uh, are there some dancers that you look up to are there some people that you recognize as kind of masters like we're talking about Albert and we're talking about Audrey and we're talking about all these music musicians. Are there some dancers that you look up to? I definitely, um, there's so many of them, I think that are such great dancers, but um, I guess definitely uh, CT Janney, I grew up, uh, he would, you know, come a lot to mom and, and he's with Mountain Park Band. Um, he plays the, uh, and does some dancing with them, but um, I grew up seeing him dance a lot. Um, he's from around the Floyd area, um, definitely influenced me um Wanda Klein was somebody who taught me some steps uh I mean there's so many great dancers but as far as just some people who directly taught me things um and or I watched them I, you know um Harvey Rutherford who's passed away um who was a nephew to um Enoch Rutherford who mom learned a lot of banjo from um he he uh, got me my first pair of like uh, dance shoes so I mean <laughs> and he was just always like and and he was probably at some of those festivals because we did a we did like a little old timey square dance team at some of those, um, even at, at the park too, we did them, but, and he danced until he kind of had some, you know, he kind of helped lead that. And then um, he, you know, passed away. Got, yeah, it's a heart attack, but, but yeah, but definitely that's some, I mean, he was some other dancers you think of, Mom, is there any others you think that are really? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of good ones out there. Um, goodness i always think of uh bk hodges out of galax he always brings his board and he is always <laughs> just going, to yeah. he's, going to, he's 
He's, he's, he can't even stop him to talk to him sometimes. It took me, I made a number of photos of him and then I had to, I, I had to like wait for him to slow down that I could ask his name. <laughs> I'm yeah. not sure he wasn't on the board out there. He probably was. I, I believe he could have been. I mean, there's just been so many great dancers. A lot of them have gone on. Um, mm -hmm. Donald Joins was a good dancer from Wilkes County. Um, gosh, I don't know. There's just been a lot. Yeah, We've seen thousands of them over the years oh, and but, you know it's really like they're a part of the band right we right. feed off each other you know really we're all a part of the whole really well and it's all community it, i've seen that where it's dancers it's pickers it's everybody kind of hanging out and feeding off each other and 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 it, that's what makes this um the area and the music so special you know is that interaction between the audience and musician and the commute sense of community and everybody knows everybody and it's just wonderful and, and that's something that I'm, i've been missing during this uh lockdown is seeing everybody i feel like I've, I've been flying blind because i haven't been hanging out in an easy up at two in the morning listening to somebody you know really <laughs> down on on ruben string you know so, yeah um yeah but, and i do think um uh and for that, like, I, I guess I could mention, like, some of the people we did interview, too, were, like, Melissa Kirby, um, Kenny Monaghan, uh, Roby Castle, who's a real yeah. uh, great character from over in West Virginia, and Lou Myrie, who is uh, up in his 90s, and a uh, great dancer, still dancing. He, uh, I think he said he's been vaccinated. He said he was going to uh, start his square dance uh, uh, group back to practicing, like, pretty, re like, in May. So I think... Uh, is the you know it's a really I think it's a really a great thing for people I think just uh you know music and dance together so yeah so we should be looking for some square dances pretty soon then is what you're saying <laughs> we'll see I don't know we'll see we'll see what happens you know we hope ever we we hope well not before you know like I said I think um you know it's been a hard time for folks I think in the music and dance yep. communities you know because it's just yeah, you know, you want everybody to be safe and, and everything and just trying to figure out what's the right, you know, and then you, you don't want things to disappear forever either. So yep. it's been a hard, you know, hard, hard year. Well, we've been trying to keep things alive here and that's why we're, that's kind of why I like showing these old videos that we can, you know, remember what it's like to be around a whole bunch of people dancing on a board together, you know, you can't. Yes. You can't really square dance at, a, at, at six feet apart, you know, it's like. Yeah a little bit of a problem with that. Um, but there's also, you know, a number of the recordings we have of, of y'all are from uh, CD recordings where um, you over in Cana at a um, Wesley Easter's studio, I believe. And yeah. it was, uh, at that point, I think it was Spencer or Spencer Family and Friends. Is that what that was called for the Crooked Road series? Yeah, that's what John did for the yeah. Crooked Road series, yeah. Now, how are you playing in a, since you guys are such a live band and it's such a community and there's such an exchange of energy, what's it like taking that and plop it in the studio? Is, is there a difference there? Well, those particular recordings, we, we could kind of, we were around a microphone, so we were together in a room. So, you know, you could still kind of have that energy. But now when you're divided out into little booths, which we didn't do, on, uh, we have done, but not there. It's, it is definitely different. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You I, know, do you what, do you have a preference of? I, I mean, I can assume you'd rather perform in person on a stage with a bunch of people around. But it, is there are there some benefits to recording? I, I think so. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, I mean, when you're when you're separated, if you make a boo boo, you can certainly fix it easier. Yeah. That's a <laughs> yeah. I think oh. yeah. I think um. I think they both have their um. In my opinion, as far as like, I think recordings are definitely a different thing than, you know, performing it. I think there is really nice thing about a live recording. I think, um, like I said, that oh. like, the, yeah, the one at Kena was definitely live. We've definitely done it different at Kena as well, where we've, um, you know, sectioned out. And like I said, I think it, it depends kind of what type of song and maybe, um, you know, I think what you're looking for in a recording, like if you want that live energy um, for certain like fiddle tunes and things, I think it works really well. Um, I think for like maybe some singing songs, just like getting a good balance on mixes and, you know, if you want to ever add anything, especially during the pandemic, 
Um, I tried to do some safe recording as much as I had, and I actually did some at Kena. And the benefit of there is you can, during the pandemic, you can section off, or if you need somebody to overdub something later, so not a bunch of people are together, um, you know, as safe as you can. I think that stuff, you know, is totally, you know, it's really good during this time just because, you know, you to be as safe as you can, you know, like while you're trying to create art or whatever, still and do stuff. Like I do think, yeah, it's nice to have that option to be like, okay, I'm here, you're there, and we can mix it, you know, and like you said, or if somebody needs to over that part or change something is an option. But there is something really nice about the energy, I think, of a live take as well. So I like both ways. Well, Martha, do you have any recording? Do you have any recordings coming out that we should be looking for? Um, hopefully, um, like I said, I've got, I've got, uh, I recorded, you know, like a good, uh, album's worth of music. So hopefully it'll be out for too long. And, uh, um, uh, yeah, thanks to John. Like I, I was excited to, uh, I don't know how much I should share about, it, but I was excited to have, um, uh, the Ingermets, uh, sing one on, uh, on one of the songs, uh, Walking in Jerusalem. And they're just so wonderful. And we've met them through Virginia Folk Life things and, and, and the Richmond Folk Festival and, and different different places. But And they're just uh, amazing. And so I was so excited to get to, you know, and, and John got, helped make that happen. So thanks, John. But yeah, it was, uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be out sometime this year. Uh, fingers crossed if everything goes well. And yeah, so I do have a, a, another uh, album's worth of music, a lot of originals that I've wrote, but some traditional stuff too. Oh, wonderful. And and Emily, are, is there anything in the works for White Top Mountain Band? Any new coming out? Not right now. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> sometime in the future. We've All kind right. of been stopped in our tracks. <laughs> sure, sure. I understand. I just, you know what, I want, if, if in case you're hiding something under your hat, you know, I, I, I just want to make sure, you, you know, you had the opportunity. But you know what I'm going to do? I, I, I'm thinking I'm going to go play a little bit from that Cana session that we have. Um, from around 2007, uh, and this is the whole band in the studio. So, if you guys turn off your video, I will get to this. Uh, All righty.
Yeah. Oh, he's getting into it. <laughs> yeah. Dad sometimes like uh, Dad loved to do medleys, so definitely yep. like yep. Uh, definitely he and uh, enjoyed like uh, sometimes we go one song the other and be like, when's this song gonna end? <laughs> I think it was like you said with dancers too. I think you definitely could uh, could make the dancers lose the rest. But yeah. <laughs> Well, I saw some looks in that student in that booth where it's like, wait, all right, you know, you're you're communicating, like, are we still going? All right, we're still going. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Um, it, did that? What kind of memories did that bring back for you guys? Well, for me, honestly, it was just nice to, you know, like I, I think, uh, I think when you play with anybody, like, um, like certain tunes, like or things, like the rhythm, like I think Dad always would push the rhythm certain ways. Yep. Or like, uh, or even like Spencer, uh, Spencer, who's also passed away and like um, his guitar playing style, like, and he would always like, you know, he would always love to cut up and stuff. And so if you could tell, he was like kind of messing with me. So he'd always, you know, like be moving his legs or, you know, like just messing around. And, and I think, yeah, I think that's kind of, you got to get the energy of that in the recording. Cause like, uh, like I said, you know, I think sometimes like with them studio recordings, I think, you know like I you know you sometimes you play like you know just um separated but with no um like metronome or something but sometimes you like if you had a metronome or something, like like a tune like that like it would be really hard because you know you've got pushing the rhythm here you're slowing down speeding up you know slow off in songs and things like that and and so um yeah it was a good memory love playing with daddy love playing with Mr. Michelle too and mom of course so it was, and it was fun to make that recording so uh as well it's bittersweet to see things like that you know so many good times but it's also sad so many have gone yeah and family and friends also i mean some of those dancers out there we saw a while ago i know some of them are gone you know it's bittersweet but it's also good that you had so many decades of wonderful times you know uh, blessed really you know I agree, and that's that's something that we've seen across the board with this with this program is, you know, you add time to a video or a photo or a recording, and it changes it completely, you know, just intrinsically. And to see people you've lost, and to to see, you know, how people have developed and, and changed, and it's it, it is bittersweet. I really enjoy that. I'm 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 really thankful that you guys have been around and been uh, sharing your skills and talents with us for so long that we can we can be this involved and I, i'm i'm thrilled for that so thank you both so much for that yeah we we appreciate all you all have done yeah, yeah. For folk life across virginia and such a broad you always have such a broad outlook on what encompasses folk life and i just think it's wonderful yeah i think some of my favorite times have been going to like the finish ship things or like cause yes we, yeah after even when we weren't doing it sometimes we would come and just perform you know john, john would get us to come and perform just for him and it was so neat to see all the different things from like all the art to like uh shipbuilding to cooking to like car painting, car painting. <laughs> like, and um Sand remember, art. the hummingbirds like uh i remember oh. like that the brass uh gospel band oh there, they were so amazing yeah, man, they're so amazing like, band really or whatever. and like and it's so cool to like have those connections i think with food virginia Park off there's so many great things y'all do that uh yeah it's neat to see and, and like i said and like or like you know and people you wouldn't maybe have met otherwise you know yeah then, definitely you know definitely you're you become fans of like you know certain people i've met through first i'm like wow they're amazing you know i'm so glad yeah. i get to know about what they're doing like in the contortionist like a couple years ago and like the <laughs> the, the um the, the guy the, the mark, mark mark klein klein like his stuff it's like so amazing all the different stuff like that Virginia folk life, you know, brings into our lives too. I think, I think it's definitely open, you know, you to see so many amazing people. And I think everybody's kind of rooted in something, like you said, that's passed on. And I think, you know, growing up, a lot of times I would see dad, like, uh, you know, um, like when he would hear an old recording of like Albert talking or yep. like playing, like I could kind of see his eyes, like remembering, you know, in a yep. good way. 
And so I think in some ways it's the same for us now, you know, when like dad's gone or people like that, but it's a special thing to have those because, you, you know, it takes you back somewhere. And to give a nod and recognition to people that have passed on their or never forget them, you know, because nobody be where they are if it wasn't for somebody else sharing something really, you know. That's true. Yeah. And I know Audrey always said, you know, I think said, well, you know, when do you, I think I've heard her say, well, when do you think of Albert? You know, and she said, well, ever, every single day. You every know? single day, definitely. Like something that he taught me or, and I think it even goes beyond just the crafts you teach, but I think um, one thing, I mean, I didn't know Albert, but I think one thing, you know, I've found is like, not only, and I see this with the Virginia Folk Life with a lot of people, but not only in the craft as much as just people who have a way of being generous and what they know, like, whether it's like, I know this, some people know a lot, but they don't want to share it. Yeah. With I mean, I'm not, I mean, you know, a lot of people will, but, but I think that's one thing, like, and if you learn from somebody who's super generous with what they know, um, you know, then I think, um, then I think you kind of want to be the same type, you know, like in Fast and I think like we, I've worked with the jam program, like trying to, and, uh, with the string band and then a lot of other people, you know, that have passed on, like, you know, you want to kind of share things because it was shared so freely with you, you know, in a kind way, you know? Yeah. Well, and you know what? you guys uh have done that too you've been very generous with your songs and your knowledge one of the things you talked about that, that really ties right in it's it's like you know it's coming or something uh the <laughs> our videos like it's like we planned this <laughs> but um you know you talk about um meeting people at the festivals that you wouldn't really have the opportunity to meet and i know that you all have had a, an, a you've made a great impression on the legendary Inger Metz. Oh, um, they loved your music. And I remember, I think, I'm not sure which festival it was, whether it was at Richmond or whether it was uh, when the Inger Metz played with Sherman Holmes at the show for Joe at the Rex Theater in Galax. Yes. They heard you sing um, a song by uh, Miss Olabel Reed, um, uh, I've Endured. And, and there's a family connection there, isn't there? Yes, uh, so um, yeah, Olabel on, on my dad's side, Olabel. Um, so we're at we're Kinsey she, She's originally her family's from up in White Top. So her her mother, Ella May Osborne. Um, so that uh, her her grandpa is is also my great uncle. So Cicero Osborne was her grandpa, who was uh, uh, kind of. They had, I guess, I mean, I've heard my dad tell so many stories about the Osborns up on Cabin Creek because they're just kind of characters, I guess, in a, in a great way. Like, they, you know, they always had something going on. You know, people would come, stay. They had a bunch of kids. But one of his daughter was Ella May, who was Olivelle's grandpa. Grandpa, And then uh, uh, and then also, like, uh, yeah, he's my great uncle, Cicero Osborne. So Olivelle and Thornton's mom were first cousins. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And, and so the, the you, you guys perform this song, um, I've endured uh, in a traditional way, and the Inger Metz, um, I, I, they they loved it, and they interpreted it in this huge gospel way that made it <laughs> just this, like huge song that really takes my breath away every time. But uh, but the, the the last time I traveled for work before the pandemic. I came down to make some photos for the apprenticeship program, Emily, with you and Lisa. And then Martha stopped by and I recorded you guys playing the song. And, and I think it's one of the sweetest recordings ever. And I'd really like to share that if you're all right with it. Yeah. Good deal. All right, here we go. Hold on just one second. And if you could turn off your video, Emily. All right. There we go. All right. And here we go.
I think it's lovely. I, I just, you know, the, the family uh, vocals, the, the, you know, the sharing, uh, what do they call it? Blood harmony when you're, when you can sing that close and it's, it's just sounds so beautiful. And, and we had, we had a bird and a dog and a whole bunch of. Other stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a, a good day. I think, like I said, that was a, one of the last yep. days before the, I was getting ready to head to Australia on tour for six weeks um and uh yeah i think we did that recording maybe we did one show and and there was um uh, you know a little talk about you know covid and a little worse but nobody anticipated anything yeah it happened like it did and um shoot and then got over there and everything started going just you know you know crazy everything started shutting and all the you know it was um so I was lucky to get home, but, but shoot, what a crazy, you know, that was kind of right before all that yep. started happening. Yeah, I mean, it was what, maybe a week later, they, they shut down the schools. Yep. Yeah, yep. And yeah, I was over there when they started shutting, and I was like, oh no, you know, what's going to happen, and you know, you know, we, because they kind of just said, well, you know, just be careful if you're in the airport, you know, they didn't anticipate anything like that would happen, and so we got over there, and then it was like, oh my gosh, and so then everything started canceling and, and everything. And then everything started canceling for the year. So it's been a, yep. strange, year be a strange year to be an artist. But I definitely think, you know, I think it's been a good way to endure. I think by supporting like everything. Oh, I see a comment. Hi, Robin. Oh, yeah. I always love getting to see you uh, at all the things. Oh, I hope you're, doing, nice. well. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, I, I think that it, it was a crazy, crazy time to make that recording. You know, yeah. yes, <laughs> definitely. We didn't know what would be what we would be enduring. No. Oh no, definitely not. Nope. And uh, yes, uh, you know, I'm hoping things will kind of, you know, finally. Hopefully, we're kind of getting to a place where I'm, and I, we're both glad to be vaccinated. And you know, those, those of us who have endured are grateful and yeah. fortunate. Yeah. yeah so yeah and just remember everybody who has been lost this year yep. and, you know i know it's been a hard and it's been it's been tough on venues it's been tough on you Gosh, know yeah. musicians. you know i think it was just so crazy to have everything booked for a year and, and like a couple we were gonna me and mom were gonna go to the uk in september and then all of a sudden it was like well maybe things will be okay by july you know, <laughs> when, we got, when i got back in april or may or march i'm sorry it was like march we got and then i was like oh maybe by july things will be a little <laughs> under control and then it was like oh Ew. and we got to october and then it was like oh gosh you know when, when you know when will we be playing to get out you know and, but it is like you said and just like the community is such a it's besides just performing i think like just the musical community is almost like a family yeah too, and, and it's hard missing people you know and uh, for sure so it's been i just saw them flash the news that people that have been vaccinated can be out in public with people that haven't even been vaccinated without masks now wow. outside outside huh. i just wow. flashed that across the top of my screen so <laughs> oh. well, COVID flash. 
Hopefully they have the from the CDC. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah, it was from the CDC. I'm yeah. just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just well, kidding. Uh, on the topic of the musical community, um, ha have you guys been jamming with anybody? Have you made music with any friends? Have you social bubbled with anybody? Ha has music, ha ha has it helped you get through this all? Um, I do think like it's definitely, uh, um, yeah, we kind of tried to, like I said, we, we, I think we've all tried to be pretty safe. So, yeah. um, but we've had some outside jams. Yeah, done a few had, little jams. Yeah, me and Mullen have done, we did a couple of things like uh, live stream stuff for, yeah. um, I know we did one for MCTA and um, and different folks. And and like I said, I've Which done, tried to do some recording throughout this. So it's been, been kind of interesting. And yeah, online teaching. We've and, been um, teaching. Yeah, so we've online. done online jam teaching and then just uh yeah and i've had a few people just you know kind of in the same you know you kind of same thing that you could play some music with and, or you know just uh did a lot like some stuff for floyd store so well, yeah so, we've really been doing great work during this yeah yes they do they have been doing a great job just we kinda, will have our first gig there is white top mountain band in may yes, oh, on yes. memorial day friday i think it's 28 so Hopefully we can still remember the words to our songs and such. <laughs> like an outdoor, yeah, like a, they're having. Outdoor, a, it's outdoors, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's, it's cool to kind of think, well, we can, but yeah, I think, I think music, um, I've been doing a Patreon thing as well. So every month I was like, well, I'm just gonna, you know, uh, you know, keep you focused on, you know, like I did a Blue Ridge tale. So I tell like a, like a tale about an area and, and like go there. And like right now you can safely go places like say I'm going to, you know, see, you know, like, a, like I did one on Olivelle, like where the, the uh, Osborne house is, which nobody lives there now, but up on Cabin Creek, like where her, her mom's buried and stuff like that and things like that. And so that was one thing or just like doing some home recordings. So it just kind of, you know, I think, just kind of keeping going. I think it really does like writing songs. I think, you know, when things aren't always near a little hard, I think it, it is really a solace for you to play with other people sometimes or, or just write a song, you know, and just. Yeah, I, I, I can't agree more. And I think through adversity, some of the best artwork comes out of it. True. And and so I'm I'm looking forward to see what comes from you guys. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing White Top Mountain Band play again on Memorial Day. Um, is there anything you guys would like to add before we, uh, before we call it a show? I guess that's it. Just thank you so much, Pat. Thank you for is doing it, this. Is it okay to say happy? <laughs> yeah, it is. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Pat, okay, okay. I didn't know. Just, I, I know not everybody wants out there, but happy birthday, Pat. And, uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. And, uh, oh, somebody says, Enjoy uh, Minley. It's great to see you. Miss you. And yeah, yeah, we miss everybody out there. Whoever, yeah, we miss y'all. Thank you, Pat. It's good to see you, kind of. <laughs> see you online. Thank you for the kind wishes. It's been a great way to spend my birthday with Yay. <laughs> I'm such a lucky human that I get to spend the day with y'all. Thanks and, for all your work. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. It means so much to me, and and I, I can't wait to see you in person again and give you a big old hug. And, and listen to some tunes. So, right. Hi, right. Michael Plumley. I owe you a banjo lesson, Michael. <laughs> Where we didn't get connected on Zoom. Hi, Diane. Hey, Diane. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, y'all. Well, we appreciate you uh, all being here. Uh, this has been Uncovered from the Vault of the Virginia Folk Life Program. Follow us on Facebook. This will be archived on our YouTube channel. Oh, puppy dogs. Oh, yeah. We got to get some dog footage on here. What's up? Sadie oh. says, hey, uh, here's the right. star well, of our video. Oh, come here. Come here Lula. <laughs> she says, hi. Oh. Say, hey. We're live in the van at Mount Rogers School. <laughs> <laughs> and so I can't mention that I'm be, creepy. I think they eventually are going to be doing some stuff with the school. Yeah, we talked about that before the program. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Look for it. We'll, we'll be sure to promote everything we can. And uh, and we can't wait to see y'all in the future. And uh, I, I think I think we'll call it there, guys. This All right, right. let's go teach a banjo lesson. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Okay. All right, Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you so much. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye. -bye.